Hats will always be TF2's microtransaction system of choice. They're far too well established, they're iconic and heavily popularized all the way to the point where players readily identify each other via specific loadouts. TF2's weapon skins, that is, decorated weapons and war paints, will forever remain the lesser cosmetic cousin, so to speak. They've been around for a while now, but they never really sunk in like hats did. But regardless, they're here to stay. And if anyone's followed me for a while now, they'll know I'm a huge fan of TF2 skins, by and large, and I personally believe that they're pretty good additions for TF2. They're an additional layer of character customization that, for a time, was properly handled and rather healthy for the game. I say for a time because, once upon a time, TF2 skins were designed with the game in mind. But now... Ah, uh, yeah. Some people get rather upset when I dare criticize Valve or the Community Workshop Cabal, but a vast majority of war paints added since 2018 have been... questionable selections at best. That's putting it nicely. With the impending update-sized, uh, holiday-sized update, I want to push for better skins in TF2. If the positive shift in cosmetic quality during 2022 was of any indication, we might have a better chance at getting better war paints. Many players are unfamiliar with TF2 skins, so I'll briefly cover their history, just so you all know where I'm coming from. Skins were first introduced during the Gunmetal and Tough Break updates back in 2015. For all intents and purposes, these major updates were direct implementations of CSGO operations. Valve took the most successful monetization schemes from CSGO and just plopped them in TF2. And for the most part, eh, it worked out. The juicy aspects of these updates were the contracts. They breathed a ton of new life into the game for new and old players alike. And when players completed a contract, they were given a weapon skin or a case containing skins as a reward. At the time, TF2's skin system was mostly identical to CSGO's. Skins were just dubbed decorated weapons, but were still just weapon models with a custom paint job. There were only 11 weapons with skins, which was later bumped to 14 during Tough Break. All of which, though, were vanilla stock weapons. No unlocks or side grades. Now, the first four skin collections from Gunmetal were very obviously experimental. Valve was clearly testing the waters to see what could work as a skin in TF2. Some skins even used existing textures from the game files, but by and large, they, they worked out. Then, Tough Break came out later that same year. Skins took huge leaps in quality during this second update, in multiple ways. Valve improved texture quality, enhanced the wear system, added more intricate, subtle details. If Gunmetal was Valve working towards the standards for what TF2 skins should be, Tough Break is when they set the bar very fucking high. Oh yeah, forgot to mention that the first eight collections of skins were all made by Valve not the workshop, which meant that they were all linked by a common thread. They were specifically made with the game in mind. Yes, in the past, Valve once gave a damn about this game. And since Valve was paying attention to their own game, even referencing it in their own work, all of TF2's original skins meshed perfectly into the game. This is reflected in their texture work, the texture quality, color palettes, themes, tones, what have you. They all looked like they belonged in the game and looked like weapons the mercenaries would use. Certain loose exceptions exist, naturally, but these were not common, and they still retained an air of TF2 about them in some form or fashion. In general, all of the skins from these first eight collections played nicely with TF2's heavily stylized nature, and most importantly, maintained a noticeably high level of quality. Though, for those who were around back then, you may have noticed a bit of a shift between Gunmetal and Tough Break, multiple instances of the same skin name. Valve started experimenting with reusing the same textures for multiple weapon models, which gave us more weapon skins, variety is the spice of life, but this was a sign of the things to come. Just bash me like a rat! Bash me like a rat and get it over here! After Tough Break, Valve went dark on TF2 skins for a couple of years. They got busy fucking up the game with matchmaking, and it wasn't until the Jungle Inferno update in 2017 that Valve once again brought back skins. But with one very major change. They did away with decorated weapons and replaced them 
with war paints. War paints are very different. Rather than a single weapon model brandishing unique textures and mapping, war paints take a set of generally applicable textures and then map them to one of 44 different weapon models. Looking familiar now? With this new skin system, you think that Valve would come out the gate swinging with some great stuff, right? <laughs> Wrong! Yeah, nope, Valve just recycled a bunch of textures from previous collections with no changes whatsoever. Valve did make the Jungle Jackpot collection, though some of these war paints were weird, not at all reflective of the themes and patterns that set the standard back in 2015. You had bamboo and crocodiles? A fuzzy ball sack war paint. Yeah, I mean, I get that they were themed after Mercenary Park, but they really dropped the ball on some of these. The second case collection, the Infernal Reward case, was not Valve made. Much like hats, maps, and unusual effects, Valve started dipping into the community workshop for skins during Jungle Inferno. This case contained the first of many entirely community created war paint collections. Some of the war paints were, you know, rather fitting, but others felt very out of place. We had pizza! Yeah, pizza. Yeah, it's great. And ducks again. Yeah, hell yeah. We, we just fucking, yeah, we fucking love ducks, Valve. Am I right, guys? Yeah, we just can't get enough of these fucking ducks. We get it. You fucked up. End of the line. Stop reminding us. I vividly remember thinking, oh, great. This is what passes for a TF2 skin now? Oh, boy, here we go. Didn't stop me from buying a Freedom Wrap the same day of the release, though. Regardless, the first four war paint collections still mostly meshed well enough with TF2, though half of them just reused textures that fit in the game anyways, so that's not saying much. Yet, there was still a certain level of quality with these skins. They were still trying to meet that quality bar set two years prior by Valve. <sighs> and then, moving forward, Smithsmiths of 2017 brought what many consider to be the last decent collection of skins ever released. Aside from a few mistakes, these war paints were, mostly, fairly high quality in terms of their texture work, and meshed relatively well with the game, or at least, you know, skirted the line. But after 2017, there has been a significant and very sharp decline in the quality of war paints. Valve adds only one or two war paint collections per year, and now only during holiday events. Instead of keeping these cases general, like in 2017, they began selecting strictly Halloween or Christmas themed skins, most of which are tacky, soulless, and completely unbefitting of the standards set by everything else that came before. Valve seemingly dropped all quality standards for their selections. You can see the contrast in quality between skins added in 2015, hell, even 2017, and those added just last year. We went from high quality texture work that was reflective of the stylization, the tones, and the level of detail in TF2 to just flat textures, or stripes, stock images, traced clip art, hyper-saturated color palettes, tacky sticker patterns and holiday prints, all of which simply have no business being in a heavily stylized game like TF2. A few passable selections make it in each year, but by and large, the quality and the charm of older TF2 skins has vanished. This has been the state of TF2 skins for nearly five years now, with no signs of improving, unlike with hats. So what in the fuck happened here? First problem, the war paint system drastically lowers the bar for entry on the community workshop. Second problem, Valve doesn't uphold any sort of quality standards for item selections anymore, seemingly selecting everything at random. And third, Valve doesn't facilitate the full potential of the war paint system, and often counteracts it. Alright, first problem, which ultimately stems into the second problem. War paints significantly lower the bar for entry on workshop submissions. Hats, unusual effects, maps, taunts, etc. require at minimum, working knowledge of texturing, particle animations, modeling, various programs like Hammer or Blender or Source Filmmaker, coding, what have you. There exists a breadth of skills needed to make these types of assets merely compatible with TF2. As such, this filters out many low-quality submissions that Valve could accidentally pick. 
since it's all around harder to make these assets functional. But war paints? You just need two square textures at minimum, <laughs> hell, even just one, and you're done. You can fire up your preferred drawing program, doodle something, or do even less like grabbing something off of Google and then chalk it up as a finished product. Hey, how are ya? You like TF2 skins? Well, I'm about to show you just how easy it is to make one and even get it in game. I'm gonna make a Valve approved quality war paint quality TF2 skin in less than 60 seconds. Are you ready? In three, two, one, let's go. Done. Done. <laughs> oh, man. Money. Money. Give me money, Valve. I want money. Money now, please. Thank you, Valve. Money. Give me money. This is a problem. Also, just as a brief aside, because my mind was wandering while creating that steaming pile of shit. Another alarming development, thanks to the lovely modern era we all reside in, AI-generated textures are now permeating into the workshop as war paint submissions. Yeah. And uh, it really wouldn't surprise me if we already have one in-game. I have my suspicions. Don't know for sure, but... Uh, signs point towards yes. Initially, this wasn't a problem. Back in 2017, workshoppers still went balls to the wall with creating amazing textures for war paints, and Valve still made sure not to select utter trash. Over time, however, as I'm sure we're all painfully aware, Valve's attentiveness towards item curation, map curation, hat curation, unusual effect curation, what have you, completely faded away. And as soon as people picked up on that, it was all over. And you can go look at this right now. The TF2 workshop has been flooded with low quality war paint submissions. More so now after that recent blog post announcement, because they are piss easy to make. Since Valve doesn't curate skin selections anymore, there is a despairingly massive quality gap between the highest quality war paint submissions and the accepted war paints. And that's not even in regards to violating the art style and tone of TF2. I'm simply referring to quality. We mostly get mediocre war paints that simply do not belong in TF2 based on quality standards alone. Amateur work, Googled or original clip art, stock images, child's drawings. What the fuck is this, Valve? Seriously, and you're still at it too. I'm being harsh because this is simply unacceptable. It shouldn't be normalized as acceptable either, and yet, here you are, encouraging this crap by paying people for it. Paying people thousands of dollars for something that can be made in less than five minutes. Hell, two minutes. That is a spit in the face of the people that make extremely high quality work and constantly get ignored. There isn't a lack of high quality war paints either. The workshop has tons of them. Which brings us to our third problem. Valve does not facilitate nor encourage the creation of high quality war paints. Despite the contradictory image posed by most accepted war paints, the war paint system has an amazing level of depth. Some workshoppers, to this day, still create amazingly intricate, high quality war paints that would mesh perfectly with the game, just like the skins of old. But nearly all of them are overlooked for shit like this. Why? It's a doubly faceted problem that's thankfully pretty easy to explain. The first facet also happens to be the biggest problem that TF2 has been facing over the past, oh, five to six years now. Valve doesn't want to perform any extra work on TF2, aside from sporadic decisions like backporting vScript for whatever reason. Let's say you want to make a war paint. You can't just make some textures and then tell Valve what goes where. Valve almost exclusively selects war paints that use existing war paints as a template. Meaning, every new war paint we get uses an existing one whose textures are just swapped out for those made by someone else. Once you tell Valve what war paint acts as the base, it's just a simple copy and paste operation. No new code is required for the texture mapping. Pretty much every existing war paint we have in TF2 uses one of Jungle Inferno's war paints as the template. 
because those are the only Valve made war paints we ever got. Ergo, the war paint system is extremely limited. This stifles creativity and forces creators to adhere to a handful of templates, most of which don't look all that good on all 44 weapon models. However, some workshoppers have managed to circumvent these limitations by creating their own custom war paint templates. But this requires tweaking game files with custom code. Therefore, Valve almost never adds these custom templates because they go beyond a simple copy and paste job, requiring more coding work to finagle them into the game. And if a Workshop war paint submission uses a non-conventional base, like Dragon Slayer, or utilizes custom mapping for only one or two weapon models, those submissions are dead on arrival. If a skin's implementation goes beyond that simple copy and paste operation, it's guaranteed to be ignored. Well, all right then, Valve can just add war paints that don't use custom templates. There are plenty Plenty of high quality options on the workshop. There's no excuse to ignore these. And yet, Valve ignores these too. They instead pick skins like this. Which brings us to the second facet of this problem. Valve mostly selects war paints from the same creators, just like with hats and maps and pretty much everything else, with seemingly zero quality standards. Oh, what? You don't believe me? Well, all right then. Of the 89 community-made war paints added since Jungle Inferno, hopefully I didn't miss any, 31 of them are made by six people. What the fuck is this? These eight war paints are made by the same guy. Three of them have been proven to use ripped clip art from Google. I wouldn't be surprised if these other ones did too, but Valve keeps picking his skins anyways. Should I keep going? I mean, fuck it, why not, right? No less than 50 war paints come from a small group of workshoppers, roughly 20 to 25 people, including the previous six, with multiple items in the game. And not just one or two other items, no, I'm talking 5, 10, sometimes 20 or more attributed to each of their names. And only about 15 war paints came from creators that didn't have another item in TF2 at the time, or didn't collaborate with someone who did, as far as I can tell. Valve very obviously plays favorites when picking items. They've done this for years. A handful of people make most of the content for TF2. And honestly, I could care less about who gets what and when. All of the skins in TF2 could be made by the same fucking guy. I don't care. What I care about is quality. And when there are no quality standards and people are around to exploit it, this is what we get. And that's the point of this video, to bring more attention to the stark lack of care being taken with TF2 skins. Care from Valve that has been rotting away since 2017 and is obviously non-existent now. Plenty of new workshoppers create tons of amazing skins that Valve can add right now that are reflective of the higher quality standards, the themes, the tones, the stylization of TF2. Just like how skins first started, these higher quality skins are objectively better and are widely preferred across the player base as a whole, but they're almost always ignored. Even when selecting new creators, Valve makes the worst possible choices. I just don't get it. And this applies to hats and maps and everything else as well. And over the past year or so, I, and many others, have pointed out the proliferation of low quality content permeating into TF2. This pissed people off. Mostly workshoppers, naturally, because when you simultaneously disturb the status quo, aggressively criticize someone's work, and therefore jeopardize a revenue stream, you're gonna get some cases of the red ass. The decline in hat quality was painfully evident, because those are the main money makers, they're around year round, and people were tired of it, and they started speaking out. But we got some better hats during 2022. I have my doubts as to whether or not this was intentional on Valve's part, but now skins need their turn, and only a handful of people talk about them. I understand that skins are way less popular than hats, but even haters of TF2 skins gotta admit that this shit ain't right. And maybe, just maybe, more players would enjoy TF2 skins if they weren't lazily treated as an afterthought. So you know what? If I gotta take another hit for better skins, so be it. Villainize me all you want. 
I've merely presented the truth, the problems, so do with them what you will. I am more than comfortable in saying that the skins we've been getting are fucking terrible. Valve needs to do better by setting higher quality standards. Exploitative, lazy, or amateur workshoppers must be ignored and encouraged to do better with these higher quality standards if they want to get paid. The talented, passionate workshoppers that make amazing content for this game should rise to the top and have their work where it properly belongs, in the fucking game, and not left gathering dust behind AI-generated messes, memes, tacky gags, IP references, and pride flags. Ugh! Yes, the VOR pride flag is officially in TF2. Yes, its creation was intentional. Let that digest for a moment. If you don't know what that word means, don't Google it in public. My pessimism is not unwarranted. I want to be wrong. I want Valve to add better skins. I want Valve to up their quality control and properly manage the workshop as intended. I want the inclusion of a non-themed summer update coming this year to mean that this will happen. If all we're gonna get from Valve are the cosmetics and the sporadic bug fixes, they should at least get the money makers right. But if the past five years and the recent blog post edit, for God's sake, are of any indication, Valve is more than content with maintaining the status quo and not much else. I pray that some extra awareness about the abysmal decline in TF2 skins will do something, but I'm not holding my breath. And all this has been happening as the visual style becomes suffocated, with the cosmetics becoming more and more wacky and zany. It follows the path so many other desperate games have followed, trading in its original unique visual identity for the quick sales of stupid, immersion-breaking, garish, over-the-top cosmetics. Terra stopped being a world a long time ago, and it's now a vehicle for cosmetics. And when your entire existence becomes warped and molded around selling whatever looks nice, you become a dress-up game with a beat-em-up attached.